don't think we not I don't think we will not be able to uh, finish what needs to be done in as far as this cause is concerned. Perhaps if I don't know how how and where you're gonna try to batch us if we can get at least uh, I'll say three days. If we can get three days. Uh, if it's still the evening classes, if we can get that three days more, we should definitely be uh, able to complete whatever that we are still uh, left or left with. So, oh, sorry. Uh, what I was saying is, uh, <coughs> uh, please try and see if you can have a date, some dates available where you can uh, give us again. So we might need about at least three days to complete everything that we are still left with. So today we will not be able to complete uh, the work by today. So I need some, I see some there are already saying that we should do correspondent work. So we will do correspondent work, as I say, that we will not be able to finish uh, today. So. Uh, we will do correspondent work. Uh, it is only uh, that we need to arrange that and see when we will do that. So, but as for now, I want us to quickly uh, uh, to quickly try and see how far we can go with convincing. So yesterday we started convincing. And uh, while in the process, and then we ran out of time, and I realized that many of you uh, lost attention in, in the process. So I want us today to try another statement on convincing. I will again try to be uh, as slow as I can, and I'll try to explain as much as I can to make sure that all of you follow whatever that I will be uh, saying or recording here. And Dando, please uh, remember to uh, switch off your camera before I give you a chance to speak. As I saw your hand was on Dando, then you can speak. Is there a question from your side, Dando? Nothing, sir. It's a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, uh, I see Alois there say there are some recording already uh, uploaded. Please check uh, if it's uh, everything there or it's what uh, the other guy was saying. Uh, uh, Beverly, uh, we do not have uh, the class tomorrow. Uh, it has uh, not been arranged, so we don't have class tomorrow. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Uh, and send uh, pre recorded videos that could work as well. Okay, pre recorded videos that uh, that uh, that could work as well. Uh, Hi, I'll, I'll speak to the school with that regarding that. Hello? Hi, how are you? All right, all right, and you, ma'am? Well, thank you. I'm just wondering. Um, can we not maybe decide as a class today at the end of this lecture if we could maybe have classes tomorrow using the same link with you? Does it really have to be scheduled with Zukiswa? Can we not just determine as a class tomorrow a time with you? Look, unfortunately, the school have to make a decision, but I'll speak to Zukiswa during break time and uh, hear if there's anything that we can make. Okay, okay sorry. thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I don't have a problem. You can you can still have the class tomorrow, but I'm not available tomorrow afternoon to re to record. So if you have the class, then you can have it, but there won't be any recording for it because I won't be available. I think that's fine, Sisuki. We can't expect you to work on weekend. If the advocate is doing this thing on a voluntary basis for us, we, we appreciate that's a favor on its own. Okay, no, I don't have a problem. If that, even that other week, we can have it last for Friday, Friday and Saturday. But tomorrow, I, I won't be able uh, be available to record. 
So we will talk with, with Mr. with Advocate Mapelela, and then we'll see what we can do. Uh, okay. Uh, good. Good evening, Advocate. Hi. Right, evening. Um. Sorry. What time to tomorrow? Say, Zuki, so I just hope that you are done speaking. <clears throat> um. My my mind is to just suggest that advocate because there was a suggestion about pre-recorded uh, lessons. Can advocate not record the three remaining days, and then just upload them online, and then come and view them. And furthermore, advocate um, the lessons I just explained to Zuki so that the lessons that they uploaded is three videos, two comprising of lecture one. And the, the other video is just students asking questions. So we are short of lecture like, two, three, and four. So <clears throat> kindly assist us in getting them. If podcast will really help. Podcast won't be interrupted by network or internet or so forth. Thank you, advocate. Look, let me see what we can do. Because again, I'm I'm already seeing. Uh, a lot of you uh, indicating uh, the fact that it's a short notice, commitments, and all those other things, which is again very understandable. But let me quickly speak to Sizukiswa uh, during break time and see uh, what we can do that will best suit uh, everybody. Look, I will I will uh, speak also to uh, Sizuki and try to do something like your pre-recording. And uh, look, I can do that, I don't have a problem, but most of the time, personally, I I always and, uh, like it when we do it like this, and then it assists more particularly those that have questions, you are able to ask them immediately. So on that pre-recording things, and uh, you may not be able to speak to me on things that you do not understand, but we will definitely try to do uh, that pre-recordings. I know it will help uh, most of you, and uh, even if those that uh, still have problem, and then we'll see how we can assist them. Uh, I see Pinar there says podcast supporter. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think if you go through the material step by step, we should be able to follow. I think we are mature enough really to follow in what you are doing. You explain it twice, you explain it twice, you should come right. Okay, okay. No, that 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 will be all right then. Then we will we will definitely do that. I'll I'll speak to the school. And then we will do that, and I'll make it available for uh, for for everybody. Because um, with the pre-recording uh, again, it will assist you. Because then, when I'm sitting, then I'm able to do uh, uh, what do you call a lot of work in that uh, space of time. Uh, because there won't be questioning and everything, so I should be able to do that. And then we can have one day where we ask questions. Yes, yes, yes. That that should that should work for me. That should work for me. Yes. Okay. Now let's go back to our convention. Now, I want us to do another exercise on convincings, almost the same as the one that we did yesterday. Let's do this one again and let's see where you went wrong. Let's see and try to uh, emphasize where you did not understand yesterday so that to make sure that at the end of this lecture at least all of us must have some sort of a basic understanding on how the convincing transactions work and as i said please try pay attention where you don't follow let me know let me see how I can try to, to assist, to explain, to make sure that you understand each and every transaction. And as I said earlier on, to say that in your convincing, that's why you see now that that double entry rule, the double entry system that we talked about on the first day, it's uh, now full force in operation. Therefore, it means 
almost every transaction that you record, you record it um, on a double uh, entry basis, and you do that yourself. Unlike when you were doing the bank reconciliation, uh, uh, where in other transactions is recorded for you, and then the, uh, you have to make sure that you record the other one. So here, you take responsibility recording all the transactions that you need to record. Now, I want us to go into our exercises there. That document there, the one with questions, the one that was attached uh, to this uh, uh, link with questions, and then I want us to go to question number 14. 14. Yes. You can then understand the calling. Yes, question number 14. Yes, Yako, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to work on that. I'm definitely going to work on that uh, to try and assist everybody. I will definitely work on that. Yes, question number 14, one four. One four. And then I'm going to read that question, and then uh, then we will start recording that that statement. It says your I client. Think... Okay. Where is it uploaded? The where where the the link that you are somebody has also uh, posted it there on the on the chat box. The link that you are connected to. When that link was sent, there was attachments. The one for, for uh, conveyancing or the, the three attachment conveyancing. There's conveyances, there's conveyancing steps, there is um, uh, correspondence steps, and then there is another document with uh, many pages. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, that one, that's where we are. So let's look at question number 14. And uh, Dando uh, has sent the question there, as you were asking, it's there on the system. Your client, Mr. Purchase, are concerned you about the purchase of a home which he has negotiated to purchase from Mr. Seller for 500,000 rand. He has 50,000 rands available as a deposit. The building societies agreed to grant him a bond for 300,000 rand. Now, if you look at those transactions, you will see the property is selling for 500,000 rands. He has 50,000 available as a deposit, and the bond is only for 300,000 rands. Therefore, the total will be 350,000 rands. And that is still short of the purchase price of, the, of 500,000 rands. Now, he asks you to arrange a second bond for 150,000 rands. You speak to your client, Mr. Lender, who has 200,000 rand in your trust account. What's very important there is that you are speaking to this Mr. Lender. However, you are already holding an amount of 200,000 rand for Mr. Lender in your trust account. Mr. Lender agreed to advance the money on registration of the second bond. All costs of a registration of transfer and bond are to be paid by the purchaser. The following are the details. On the 6th of June, July, sorry, on the 6th of July, purchaser pays with a deposit of 50,000 rand in cash. Now, you know that when you receive this money from the purchaser, it tells you it's trust money, which means you are going to debit your trust cash book. Thereafter, you say, whose money is this? From whom am I receiving this money? This is the purchaser's money. That tells you you will need a T account that you are going to name it the purchaser's trust ledger account, and you credit that trust ledger account with the deposit of 50,000 rands. And 25,000 rand by EFT for the transfer and bond cost. Now you also have an EFT there for 25,000 rand that you are also receiving from the purchaser. That means the same way you have received the 50,000 rands, you are going to receive the 25,000 rands from the purchaser. Now, on the, in the, uh, on the 7th of July, you receive the Britain Society guarantee for 300,000. Therefore, we all know 
that on the so 7th of July, you are not receiving anything. It is just a guarantee. Somebody indicated that a day to say a promissory note of some, of some sort. So it's just a guarantee from the bank to say, as soon as the property is registered, we will pay you the money. The bond for this plan has been approved. So as I said the other day, to say these are very important. They again will work as a source of reference. Let's say, for instance, for whatever reason, when you read there on the 7th of July, you receive that uh, 300,000 rents on the 7th of July, you debited your trust cash book, and then you credited the purchase of trust ledger account with 300,000 rents, which is a correct transaction if you overlook uh, the, the, the dates. When or you overlook... Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're moving a bit too fast. I, 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 I'm so sorry to like take you back, but I got lost even at this on the sixth of July. On the sixth of July. Yes, um, I apologize for taking you back. Advocate, could I just I'm say I'm trying I'm to get everything clearly. Sorry. So, students must understand. You're just reading us through it. We're going to do it again in person. One yes. Okay. Yeah, what I'm doing now is just okay. reading the question. I'm coming back to do it okay. and then explain it in details. Yes. All right. Thank you. I understand. Yes. So what I was saying is that if you record that 300,000 rand on the 7th of July and on your answer is, is in, it's reflecting that 7th of July, you are going to be marked wrong for receiving that money on the 7th of July. So remember that money, that bank guarantee, you are going to only receive it on day of registration, which is the second step in those steps that we have done. Therefore, that's why I said when you are given the dates, record the dates and make sure that you follow the sequence of the dates. And please remember, and I always emphasize this, if you are given the dates, you must record the dates. If you don't record the dates, you will not be marked. Simply because, this is a very simple scenario. Somebody who received this money on the 7th, but recorded it in the correct accounts, will be marked incorrect, but will be marked correct for the other transaction that were recorded on the relevant, on the correct dates. Now, if you have not recorded a date at all, now, Marking your transactions and ignoring the fact that they were dates, it will be unfair for this one who received it on the wrong date, but received it the same way as you have received it. So that is the reasoning behind that. That's why I'm saying, please do not forget, record the dates if you are given the dates. Now, the 8th of July, you pay the transfer duty. And now you pay the transfer duty, you will see that you've got the 25,000 rand that you receive as an EFT payments in your trust cash book. And therefore, it tells you that there is money available in trust for you to pay that transfer duty directly from your trust account. We will deal with that on how you pay that amount from your trust account in a moment. 11th of July, you invest the 50,000 rand in a bit of site for the benefit of the purchaser. Now, here you, you, you need to read that statement and read into it, and it tells you exactly what is happening. It says you are investing 50,000 rands in the better society. What's very important there, it says for the benefit of the purchaser. Now, if it says for the benefit of the purchaser, the invest can only benefit the purchaser if that investment was on the instruction of the purchaser. Correct, Louis? That is 86.4. So, uh, some student uh, uh, later on asked me to say, but how do you know that this is 86.4? For the fact that it says for the benefit of the purchaser, it tells you it is 86.4 investment. You invest the 200,000 held in trust for Mr. Lender in the Belton Society account for the benefit of Mr. Lender. And then you do another investment for Mr. Lender. And then on the 26th, the transfer bonds are registered. Now, remember, very important, I said 
as soon as they say the transfer and bond are registered, you look no further than those steps that you that I gave you. So you look no further than those steps. You just follow those steps. When you are done with the last step, you will be done with this transaction. So you simply follow the steps on the day of registration. Your account to Mr. Seller and Mr. Pechesa. Deputy Mr. Pechesa, uh, Deputy Mr. Pechesa, a fee of 2,000 rand, and Mr. Lenda, a fee of 300 rand. You receive 5,000 rand interest from Mr. Pechesa and 10,000 rand from Mr. Lenda. You are required to make all the entries in your trust and business books of account, <clears throat> open separate accounts for Mr. Pechesa and Mr. Lenda. Transfer the amount you are entitled to your business banking account. No provision need be made for that. Now, I want us to <clears throat> record that statement as we will be reading now. I want us to read that statement, and as we read, we record, and during that process, I will try my best to make sure I explain to the extent that you will understand what and how those transactions should be recorded in your books. Now, let's start the statement again at the top. Now we are going to record it. Your client, Mr. Pechesa, consults you about the purchase of a home which he has negotiated to purchase from Mr. Seller for 500,000 rand. That is the, pay, the price of the property. You have not received the 500 rand. You are not recording the 500 uh, uh, rand anywhere. The question that we are doing, uh, we are doing it to Meleng is question number 14 on the questions, the hands out. Question number 14. Thank you, Murieri. That's the number there. Um, he has 50,000 available as a deposit. Again, this deposit you have, you have not received it. You, the purchaser has it. You don't record that 50,000 anywhere. The British society has agreed to grant him a bond for 300,000 rands, and he, uh, you, he asked you to arrange a second bond for 150,000 rand. You speak to your client, Mr. Lenda, who has 200,000 rand in your trust account. Now we can pause it there. They say, you are already holding an amount of 200,000 rand in your trust account for Mr. Lenda. Now, what you need to do is that you need to record that 200,000 rand in your books because they say you are already hold, having that money. You've got that money in your trust, and therefore you need to deal with that money now. You need to record it to make sure it's reflect in your trust. You need to make sure that it reflects in your trust, and for that reason, let's open a T account for the trust cash book because that's what we are going to uh, do. And then, uh, Parker, yes, correct. Which date are we going to use to record that 200,000? You are going to record the first day of the month because the assumption is that this is the balance that you carried from the previous month. So, therefore, when you start this month of July, you already had 200,000 rands in your trust account. Therefore, you are going to record it as the balance from the 1st of July. Okay. Bandile, they said you need to uh, switch off your camera. Okay. Let's do our T account. Uh, let's T account to record that deposit, that 200,000 rands. Not deposit, but the balance of uh, the lender. Let's do our T accounts, which is your trust cash book. The T account, which is your trust cash book. And in that trust cash book, remember you are receiving, this is the money that you have received. This is the positive money. That means this is a debit transaction. Then you go to the left hand side, which is your debit of your trust cash book. You record the 1st of July. You can say balance of 200,000 rents. And you're going to credit lender. 
you can record that money uh, uh, 200,000 rands on the debit side of your trust cash flow because that is the money that you are holding. Uh, why are we talking out for full 200,000 and not just 150? Remember now we are uh, talking about the 200,000 which is the lender's money. We have not yet given the bond to the purchaser. So we need to have that money first before uh, any amount can be advanced to the purchaser. So the purchaser is going to get 150 of this 200,000. So this 200,000, they say it's already in your trust. That's why you must record it and then after recording it, then you can borrow the 150 to, uh, how do you call it, to the purchaser because the 150 is what uh, he requires to cover that purchase price. Now, after you've deputed your trust cash book, then you ask yourself again that, that question, that famous question, whose money is this? This is the lender's money, and therefore you are going to open a trust ledger account for the lender. So let's go and open another T account. Let's open another T account for the lender. Let's open another T account for the lender. Which is Mr. Lender's Trust. Mr. Lender's Trust and on Mr. Lender's Trust Yes, Bandia, open Mr. Lenders Trust, and then on Mr. Lenders Trust, after you open Mr. Lenders Trust Ledger Account, which is a T account, and then on that Lenders Trust Ledger Account, you are going to credit it with 200,000, correct? And then you come here on the credit side, the 1st of July, 200,000 rents from your trust cash book. Therefore, you credit the lenders trust ledger account with that amount of 200,000 rand. So the 200,000 rand is credited on the lender trust ledger account on the first day of the month of July. Therefore, that's how you record that 200,000 rand. Debit your trust cash book. That means you record the money that you already have in your trust cash book. And then you say, whose money is this? This is the, uh, the lender's money. And then you go to the lender trust ledger account, the date, the 7th of July, 200,000 XTCB. In the trust cash book here, you can simply say balance, or balance brought down, or balance, as long as we know that is that balance that you are, hold, you are holding, the money that you are still holding for Mr. Lender in your trust account. So that is Mr. Lender's money. Oh. Then we recorded that money as it is in our trust now. Was there a question? Okay, if there's no question, please, there's somebody there who has uh, kids uh, in the background, just try and mute yourself, mute yourself, please. Um, advocate a question. Yes. Um, the trust cash book for July, is it the purchaser's trust cash book or um, is it the trust cash book that belongs to the, to the firm? This is the firm's trust cash book. Remember, in this trust cash book, you are not only going to record the purchaser's transaction. You, are, you, you already recorded the lender's transaction. You will record the purchaser's transaction. You will record the lender's transaction. Well, every of your client for the month, uh, uh, for this month, you will record their transactions in that trust cash book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Bandile. The reference there. Now, they say, after seeing that, Mr. Lenda agreed to advance the money on registration of the second bond. Remember, that money has not yet been advanced. He has just agreed to advance that money. Therefore, you are not going to record the advancement of that money. Uh, the lender's credit is positive balance. Yes, the lender is a trust ledger. As soon as you credit, it shows that you are holding 200,000 for him, therefore it's a positive balance. 
Now, what I was saying is that you, you, you have agreed, the lenders agreed to advance that money, but he has not yet transferred it to the, to the purchaser. So the money is still with us and is credited to the lender's trust ledger account and you, you leave it like that for now. All costs of registration of transfer and bonds are to be paid by the purchaser and the following are the details. Mr. Purchaser pays with a deposit of 50 thousand in cash. Let's pause it there. You are receiving the deposit of 50 thousand rands in cash from Mr. Purchaser. This is client's money, isn't so? In which account are you going to receive client's money? Trust cash pool. Trust, trust cash yes. We all agree that we are going to receive that money in our trust cash book, and then uh, Reginald, you don't credit because credit in your trust cash book means you are paying out. And therefore, it means you are going to debit your trust cash book because you are not paying this money out, you are receiving it. That's why it's going to be a debit. Therefore, let's go to the left-hand side of your trust cash book, which is the debit side. And then you'll write the date, 6th July. And then you say, deposit 50,000 rents. Go so on your trust cash book, on the debit side, or the left-hand side, the date is the 6th of July, Deposit fifty thousand. Now the question sorry, is. Sorry, advocate. Okay. Where, sorry for inter Where do we get the first of July? Before I get lost. No, I have said the first of July, where you recorded the two hundred thousand. Is because that money they say you have it. So the assumption is you had it even from the previous month. Therefore, when you open the month of January, you already had. 200,000. That's why when you recorded that, you say is the balance that you had on the 1st of July, and the 1st of July is the beginning of the month. That's where we okay. got the 1st of July. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, Sorry, Prof. Yeah. Prof. Uh, just uh, uh, advocate. Yes, yeah, I nearly got the good title, yeah? All right. <laughs> Just as a clarity-seeking um, statement, yes. For for a, for a layman like myself, yeah. If if you say to me, a uh, purchaser pays you the deposit of fifty thousand in cash mm -hmm. and twenty five thousand by EFT, uh, I would think it's it's seventy five thousand rent because of the word cash. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. I can understand in this context that it is fifty thousand. So I was saying for, you know, it, it would be nice to, to be as clear as we possibly can. Yeah, what, what, what happens is that, please also remember that it's very important. When you do these transactions, if they are giving you two values separately, please try and record them separately as they are. Do not add them together. Because I always say, sometimes you find somebody marking your script. He is looking for 25,000 and 50,000 rands. And then suddenly there is 75,000 rand there. People, this person has been marking over 200,000, 200, so not 200,000, but 200 script uh, during the course of that day. So the chances are that when he sees 75,000 rand, you will not even know uh, where that comes from. And his mind or her mind is focused on 50,000, 25,000 rands. Uh, 200,000 rand, so uh, 75, it will be something that is not in his or her mind. So just going to mark, uh, mark, uh, mark it off. So if you are given two values, try to record them separately. Okay. Advocate. Sorry, Advocate. Uh, Advocate. Does it mean that um, uh, by Advocate. encouraging us to record them separately, it even uh, eliminates, it eliminates uh, the possibility of, uh, you know, a reverse or in an event where the EFT payment that has been made has been reversed for strange reasons by the bank. So you can know and directly get to it to say this was re uh, reversed. Cor correct, correct. It makes even easier. Later on, when we have been writing for long, they tell you that the EFT has now been reversed. 
your mind is also uh, running to finish and then you start looking for that EFT of uh, 25,000 you don't see it and then you ask yourself uh, uh, how where does this come from and it take time before you see it and then you have spent about two three minutes looking for it so it's very it's it also going to assist you in that in that case sure. yes. okay now let's proceed okay Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, am I correct to assume that if they say 55,000 in cash, this is towards the bond? Yeah, the they deposit. Say therefore, they are separating the two. Uh, 25 is for, for transfer. 50, I can't touch it because it's going towards the property. Yes, the, the deposit is for the property, and then the, the 25,000 is for the transfer and bond cost. So the deposit there. Is a deposit. Remember, there at the beginning, they said he had 50,000 available as a deposit. That means a deposit for the property. Now, that 50,000 as a deposit, he is giving it to you on the 6th of, of, of July. That's what you are receiving there, that deposit for the property. Okay. Now, we have just received a 50,000 on the debit side of our trust cash book. Now, the question is. Whose money is this? Who must be credited to the 50,000 rands? Purchaser, because this is the purchaser's money. Therefore, you are going to uh, credit the purchaser's trust ledger account. Because it's very important to ask yourself that question. Whose money is this that I'm receiving on the debit side of my cash book? If it's for the purchaser, then we'll go and debit the purchaser's trust ledger account. Now, let's go and open the purchaser's trust ledger account and credit with that amount of 50,000 rents. Let's open the purchaser's trust ledger account. Then we open a T account here, which is the purchase of trust. And then on this purchase of trust, and then you go to the uh, credit side, which is the right hand side. Remember, in the trust cash book, you recorded it on the debit side. Now, the double entry rule, therefore, wherever you post it, it must be to the credit side. Now, you go to the credit side of the purchase as trust ledger account, and then we record that date of the 6th of July. And then you can say 50,000 rents XTCB. Now you opened the purchase as trust ledger account. So on this purchase as trust ledger account, and then you credited the purchase as trust ledger account with that amount of 50,000 rent. That is after you have debited your trust cash book. You credited 50,000 rands. Oh, my number did cut here. That I is. Have, okay. Can you just assist with the paper? We didn't see it properly. Okay. That 50 there uh, should be 50,050 and triple zero. That credit the purchase as trust ledger account. Those zeros are not visible there. So it'll be purchase as trust, and then you credit there um, uh, 50,000 Rand XTCB. And that is the purchase as trust ledger account. Now you have received that deposit. But the statement says you also received 25,000 Rand by EFT. XTCB or TCB. Uh, uh, Z. Uh, if you say XTCP or you just say TCP, it's still okay. We know that it, uh, we need to follow it up or it's extracted from the trust cash book. Okay. Now, we now have 25,000 rands. Uh, Jim, we are on question number 14 of the hands out. That, uh, those ones with, with questions. So we are doing question number 14. Now, we are now receiving 
25,000 rand from the uh, in the form of an EFT. Now again, this 25,000 rand is client's money, isn't so? Yes. And because yes. it's client's money, in which account are you going to receive client's money? On the trust cash book. Trust cash book. Do we debit or create our trust cash book? We debit it. Debit it. Correct. Let's go to our trust cash book on the debit side, which is the left hand side. On the same day, the 6th of July, you can say performer costs or costs. Performer costs or costs, and then you say 25,000 rents. Perform a course or course there of 25,000 rands. Now the question is, or before that, this is the money that we are receiving from the purchaser. That tells you this is the purchaser's money, which means who do we credit with this 25,000 rands after debiting our trust cash book? Purchaser. The purchaser's trust ledger account. The purchaser's trust ledger account, correct. You're going to create the purchaser. Remember, you have already opened the purchaser's trust. You are not going to open another purchaser's trust. You only open one purchaser's trust, and then you can record all these transactions in that purchaser's trust ledger account. Please, I've seen it many times. Student will open a, a ledger account for each of the transactions or each of the money that they've, they're receiving. So you don't open a second one, you simply use that initial one. Where we recorded the 50,000 rand, now you're going to record the 25,000 rand. So let's go to that purchase of trust on the credit side, which is the right hand side. Still on the 6th of 7. 25,000 rand, XTCB. Then on the purchase of trust led account, on the credit side, you record that 25,000 rands at TCB or TCB. That's how you record that 25,000 rands in the purchaser's trust ledger account. Because remember, you must first receive it on the debit side of your trust cash book because that's where you receive the money that belongs to your client. And therefore, after receiving on the debit side, every time you record anything on the debit side, you already ask yourself a question. Who am I going to credit? Whose money is this that I'm receiving in my trust cash book? In this case, it was the purchaser's money. Therefore, we went and we credited the purchaser's trust ledger account with that money that we were receiving. Now, let's go to the next one. On the 7th of July, you receive the Beta Society guarantee for 300,000 rand. What do we record on the 7th of July? Nothing. 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 Correct. You don't record anything. Now, the 8th of July. Nothing is yet. Fredonib, correct? The 8th of July, you pay the transfer duty of 18,000 rand. Now, the question is, hmm? who is liable for paying the transfer duty? The purchaser. The purchaser. Correct. The purchaser. Correct. The purchaser. Correct. Now, we must pay the transfer duty of 18,000 rand on behalf of the purchaser. Yes. First question that you need to ask yourself is, Am I holding funds on behalf of the purchaser in trust? Yes. yes. If you are paying, no, no, not yet, uh, uh, Louis, you are going to do the fee general only when you raise the fees for yourself. That's when mm -hmm. you do a fee general. At this stage, you are, it's, that is not a fee, it's a disbursement. So you don't do a fee general when you pay for the disbursement. As soon as they say you... Uh, are doing the fee, and then that's when we'll do uh, a fee general. Yes, uh, Janine, you are correct. Remember, we've got the 25,000 rands that we receive as a, uh, uh, the bond and the transcend bond costs. 
Therefore, you are going to use that money to pay the transfer and bond costs. So credit trust cash pool with 18K and debit purchases ledger with 18K. Correct. That's what you are going to do. Remember from the trust cash book, when you make a payment, you must credit, isn't so? Yes. So just go to our trust cash book and make a payment of 18,000 rents. In other words, you are going to go to the credit side of your trust cash book. If we only receive the deposit, we will have had to pay from the business account. Correct, Tignin? If, you, if what you received was just the deposit and no other value, then you will pay from your business account by crediting your business account, and then you will have debited the purchaser's business ledger. Okay. Uh, now, let's now make a payment of that uh, amount of 18000 And I'm saying we go to the credit side of our trust cash book, and then we say, the 8th of July, the credit side, which is the right hand side, the 8th of July, and therefore transfer duty, 18,000 rents. Now, the question is, on whose behalf are you paying the 18,000 rents? Who is liable for paying the transfer cost? It's the purchaser. The purchaser. The purchaser. Yes, Janine, you are also correct. Janine, you are also correct. Give it to us a check. You will also pay from the business. Transfer duty, credit your trust cash book, and you are going to debit the purchaser. Now, you credited your trust cash book here with 18000 that you are paying as a transfer duty. You credited your trust cash book, and we say, we all agree so far, that after crediting that trust cash book, now we are going to debit the purchaser's trust because we are paying on behalf of the purchaser. Now, let's go to the purchaser's trust ledger account on the debit side. Record the date there. The 8th of July. That is transfer duty. Transfer duty of 18,000 rents. XTCB. You go to the purchaser's trust led account on the debit side. You are going to debit the purchaser's trust led account there with that amount of 18,000 rents. You are going to debit the purchaser's trust ledger account with that value of 18,000 rents. And again, while, uh, yeah. Why not the receiver of revenue? Very important. That's what I have been saying. And I said, do not open an account, a separate account for the disbursement. Because if you open that account for the receiver of revenue, I can tell you, you will never be able to come back. You will never know what to do later on when you have to balance your account. That is why when you pay the receiver of revenue, just say, on whose behalf am I paying the receiver of revenue? If it's on behalf of the purchaser, debit the purchaser. You pay the estate agent, don't open an account for the estate agent. Just say, on whose behalf am I paying the estate agent? On behalf of the seller, debit the seller. I'm paying the council's account. And therefore, on whose behalf am I paying the council's account? On behalf of client C, debit client C. Do not open an account for cancer. Okay. Now, what did we do here? We pay the transfer duty of 18,000 rands, and then we also uh, uh, debited the purchaser's trust ledger account. What I was saying is, please, when you write your exams, please make sure, uh, make sure that all your transactions are as neat as they could be. And make sure that you leave space. make sure that you leave space in between your accounts. And I always say, I always say, even those accounts of yours, please just try and make sure that you don't confuse yourself. 
Why am I saying that and how do you do that? Let's say, for instance, you, you are recording those transactions. <clears throat> you can say to yourself, okay, can you please mute yourself there? You can always say, on one page, I'm only going to, re to record the trust ledgers. Please mute yourself. They say, they say, Zagaria, you need to mute yourself. Okay. Now, what I was saying is, try to say to yourself, on this one page, this is where I'm going to record my trust ledgers only. And then on the next page, I'll record my business ledgers. On this one page, I'll record my trust cash book. And then on the next page or two, I'll record my journals. Now, why am I, why do I always say this? Because sometimes in your exam, you find that you've got the purchaser's trust ledger account on page number one. And then you'll have the lender's trust ledger account on page number three. And then on page number five, you've got the seller's trust ledger account, so and so. Now you can see, even your business ledgers, you find they are stretched like that. Now my biggest problem that I've always seen is that if you've got your account, like your ledger thing now, man. stretched like that in many pages. Later on, when you have to make a transaction in the purchase as trust ledger account, what is going to happen? You go to page number one, you don't see the trust ledger account. You go to page number two, you don't see the trust ledger account. Number three, you don't see it because now you are in hurry. You go to number four and number five, you still don't find the purchase as trust ledger account. Now you go back again from page one. You are looking for the purchase as trust ledger account and you find that account after a minute or two. Now you can see how much time you have wasted. But if you know that all my ledgers are on page number three, when it's a, it's a trust ledger, you know that you quickly go to page number three and you look for the purchase as trust ledger on page number three. If I need to record in the business ledger account, I go to page number four, those are the business ledgers, and then I'll look for that specific client business ledgers on page number four. Please try to do it that way. It's going to assist you a lot. You won't have to waste time looking for the accounts. Okay. Now, let's go to the 11th. On the 11th of July, you invest 50,000 rands in the Betis Society for the benefit of the purchaser. Now you are investing the 50,000 rands. Now the question is, when you invest this 50,000 rand, from which account are you going to transfer funds? From the trust cash book. You, from the trust cash book. Yes. Uh, Zueli, um, Zueli, can you mute yourself and ask your question there? Zueli? Hello, Advocate. Yes. I wanted to know when you were talking about the answering books. Yes. The confusion that you must do as student. Can you just please repeat that again, please? Okay. Thank you. What, what I was saying is, number one, do not worry about the answer books when you write the exam. There are, there are, there are, there are, there are many answer books. If you, if you believe uh, you write on this one is full, just raise your hand. They will give you another one. You mark it book one, exam book one, and book two. Put them together. All of them will be marked. 
So never be afraid to say they may not have those answers. She, they will always have enough. Now, what I'm saying as well is that when you record your transaction, try to put your trust ledgers on one place. Put your business ledgers on one place. Put your journals on another page. That is going to help you. When you received money, for instance, from your client in your trust cash book, and then you know you need to post it to your trust ledger account. You don't need now to pay through every page. You know that your trust ledgers are on page number four. And you go straight to page number four, and then you will find the trust ledgers, and then you start looking for the purchaser's trust ledger. If that is for the lender, you know that the trust ledger is on page number, ledgers are on page number four. Then you look for those trust ledgers on page number four. Like, not like when you've got a trust ledger account on each and every page for different clients. When you record them, it takes time because you must look for that uh, specific client's trust ledger from all the pages. That's what we were trying to say. Okay. We are writing from home. Lucky you. Advocate, can you just ask a question? Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I'm under the impression that this is going to be an online exam, which yes. means we should make provision for our own stationery. Yes, yes. And have it ready. I, I'm not sure when you write it online, they will want you to do it uh, directly from your... They'll basically want you to do it directly from the system so that as soon as they say thumb up and you can immediately post it. I'm not sure about those of you who are like me. They're not that computer literate. How are you going to go through that? But I think that is how what they will want you uh, to do because uh, they will not uh, allow you to move away from the screen to go and scan your documents and then uh, send them through to them. So they want you to post them immediately when they say time up. So maybe... It's on your PC and upload. On your PC and upload, yes. Uh, uh, that's uh, uh, that's an another uh, advice there. They say you'll do it on your PC and then you will upload. So those of you uh, who do not have much uh, or not that very much computer literate, it means you need to start training yourself now to write on your uh, on your computers, on your laptops. Please try to train yourself now so that you, do, uh, you don't have problems when you will be writing your exams. Okay, so they say you will have an exam session before the exam. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, 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 but uh, that will assist you in training yourself for that exam. Okay. Now, you invest a 50,000 rand uh, in a bit society uh, for the benefit of the purchaser, and we all agree that this is an investment in terms of Section 86 sub 4. Is this all? Yes. Now, yes. Now, somebody has just answered again to say, we need to get money from the trust cash book. That means when you invest, the first thing is you need to go and transfer funds from your trust cash book, pay from your trust cash book. That means you need to go to your trust cash book on the credit side and make this payment. Let's go to the credit side of our trust cash book. And then we write that date. The 11th of July. Then you can say section 86 for sub 4 investment. You can even say you are investing on behalf of the purchaser. And then that is 50,000 rents. There you go here. Yeah. Section 86 for investment for the purchaser in the amount of 50,000 rents. That is a credit in your trust cash book because you are taking money out of your trust cash book. That's why you credit your trust cash book. Now, as soon as you credit your trust cash book, therefore you need to post that transaction. And wherever you post it, 
it must go to the debit side. Correct. Now, which, um, which how, account will go to it's debit? 86, um, 86. Section 86 for investment. Okay. Yeah. Because, because um, the, the question there says that we, the ones who are just, so we, we're going to assume that the um, client asked us to invest. Okay. 86.4, not 86.3. And your name is? It says for the benefit of the purchaser. Yeah. Yes, but, but what I'm asking is that in the exam, when it's asked, when, when it's asked we always have to assume that um, the client has asked for us to invest the money. Yes. Yeah, and you say your name is? My name is Junior. 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 Yes, yes. yes. Junior, most of the time, questions will not come uh, directly as you'll expect them to be. Now, I want us to read that statement again. It says, on the 11th, you invested 50000 in the Burton Society. Now, this is, the, this is the magic part of that statement. For the benefit of the purchase. Now... We've got two different type of investment. That is 86 sub 3 and 86 sub 4. Yes. 86 sub 3, sub 3 is for the benefit of the Legal Practice Council. And 86 sub 4 is for the benefit of a client. Oh, if benefit of the client. Say, yes. If they say oh, for the word. benefit of the client, that tells yeah. you it must be 86 sub 4. Oh, okay. No, thank you very much, Advocate. I understand now. Oh, okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, no. Advocate. Yes. Advocate. Advocate. So are yes, we yes. going to are we going to debit the purchaser's trust ledger account and then credit the second eighty four investment book for the purchaser? Okay. Remember when you invest. You don't touch your client's trust ledger account. Please always remember that. When you invest, nothing happens in your client's trust ledger account. You simply credit your trust cash book and then you debit your investment account. Why don't you touch your client's trust ledger account? Is because remember this money, despite the fact that you are investing it, you as the legal practitioner, you are still solely responsible for that investment. If your clients go to the bank and say, I want my money in this investment account, the bank will not give your client because the bank does not know your client, the bank knows you. Therefore, you are the one who invested on behalf of the client. Therefore, you still owe the clients that amount that you are investing. That's why the client's trust ledger account must still show that amount of 50,000 rand that you owe him. That 50,000 rand, despite the fact that the money is invested, but you owe your client. And the client's trust ledger account must show that you owe that particular client. Don't touch your client's trust ledger during investment. Thank you, Abhijit. Okay, now let's go and open a T account for the investment. Let's open a T account for the investment. We open a T account here. Then in this one, you can say uh, section 86 sub 4 investment and then in brackets you can just say purchaser and then we say because we have created our trust cash book and then on this investment we are going to debit and then you come here and say the 11th of 7 that cash investment of 50,000 rents XTCB. Now you open your investment account, a separate investment account there. That is your section 86 sub 4 investment in brackets. The purchase are there, and that account is debited with 50,000 rand. And as I said the other day, now you will see that 
that ledger there, which is your section 86.4, is now reflecting a debit balance. And we said our ledger should not reflect a debit balance. Now, I said the other day that this is the only exception. Your section 86.3 and 86.4 are the only two ledgers which may legitimately reflect a debit balance. And I also indicated that you get this type of a question in your exams, whether the school exam or board exam, you will find, you might find this type of question, which ledgers may legitimately reflect a debit balance. Please do not tell me a trust cash book because a trust cash book is not a ledger. Don't tell me a business cash book because a business cash book is not a ledger, but it's a cash book. Will we, will we receive mark for every correct date narration? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a package. It's a package mixture. What happens is that if you did not write any of those, then you don't get a mark. If there's a date, there must be a date, and then there must be a narration. So both of them must appear there. If you don't record any of those, then you will lose a mark. So now, okay, now we have invested that money in terms of Section 86.4 on behalf of the client, and 86.3 is for the benefit of the Legal Practice Council, which we are not dealing with at this stage. Now, the statement again says, on the 12th, you invested 200,000 rand held in trust for Mr. Lender in the British uh, Society account for the benefit of Mr. Lender. Now, it, we, are, we need to invest that 200,000 rand again. And we all agree that when we invest, we need to get money from the trust cash book, isn't it so? Yes. That means... Yes. Correct. That means... You go back again to your trust cash book and you go to the credit side. You, you pay from the uh, credit side. Then you go to the credit side and you say the 12th of July. And then you can say again, section 86.4, investment on behalf of the lender. And then you've got... What account is that, advocate? You are, you are still in your trust cash book on the credit side. Okay, thank you. We are paying money out of our trust cash book on the credit side. And then on the credit side, you start first by recording the date, and then you can say section 86 sub 4 investment uh, lender, and then you say 200,000 rents. Now, you credited, uh, you credited, um, 200,000 rands in your trust cash book. Now the question is, who are you going to debit after crediting your trust cash book? The investment account. The investment yeah. account, correct. Yeah. And this is important again before you record it. This is important. When you invest on behalf of the lender, you are not going to record that 200,000 rand in this account. You are not going to record that 200,000 rand in this section 86 for, for the purchaser. That simply means you are going to open another investment account for the lender. What I'm trying to say is that when you invest for more than one client, each client must have their own investment account. They can never be a pool of investment account where you just throw everything there. If you've got 10 clients that you are investing on behalf of, you must have 10 investment accounts. Please remember that. I've seen it again in the past, and students will just uh, throw the money okay. in that single investment account, and that's not how you do it. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me, Advocate? Yes, yes. Um, Advocate, do you, mind repeating, do you mind repeating everything that you said about the 12th of July? There was 30 on my side. Okay. That is that. On the 12th of July, we're saying 
we are investing the 200,000 rand the same way that we have invested the 50,000 rand. And we all agree that because this money is what we are going to invest, that which we are investing, we must pay it out of our trust cash book. The same way we paid out the 50,000 rand, you go to your trust cash book on the credit side. On the credit side, you are going to credit that 200,000 rand that you are investing in terms of section 86.4 investment account, but this time it's for the lender. It's a credit in your trust cash book. Now, after crediting your trust cash book 200,000 rand, we say, which account are we going to debit? And we all agree that we are going to debit an investment account. And what I will say is, are we obliged to, let me see what this one says. It, it will come back again. Uh, what I was saying is that if you are investing for more than one client, you need to open an investment account for each of your clients. So what we were doing now is we were trying to open another investment account, and this time this investment account will be for the lender. Oh, and not, not necessarily, uh, Rovimbo, Ru, 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 not necessarily. I'm just uh, doing that just for to clarify the transactions. Okay, there was someone who said, yes. Is, is this another um, Section 86.4 um, engagement account? Yes, it's another one. Okay. Yeah. Do we not open a trust ledger for the lender. Jill, we have already opened a trust ledger for the lender. Remember, when we uh, recorded 200,000 rand on the first day of the month, we deputed our trust cash book, and then we opened the uh, lender's trust ledger account, and then we credited the lender with that 200,000 rand. So we already have that lender's trust ledger account. Yes. Okay. Now let's open our Section, another section 864. Yes, the investment. Investment, and this time is for the lender. This time is for the lender. You open a T account and you hit it section 86 sub 4 investment and then for the lender. And because you have created your trust cash pool of 200,000 rand, that means what you do at section 86.4? You debit. You debit, correct. Therefore, that is on the 12th of 7. Mm -hmm. Debit side, that cash of 200,000 rands, and then XTCB. That is another investment account debit. Yeah, that's correct, Mbali. That's what you do in that investment account where you are investing your 200,000 and you will see we've got two investment account in the other one we invested the 50,000 rents and the other one you invested the 200,000 rents. so we need to see those two investment account separately they must be as separate as they are in that transaction okay then we are done with the investments. Now we can go to the 26th of July. The 26th of July, the transfer bonds are registered. And we say, as soon as the transfer bonds are registered, then you go to those eight steps. Paladi, you are correct. Debit in your trust cash book means money in. The only debit, the only debt debit in the ledger that says money in is your investment account. All other ledgers means money out. All other ledgers, when you debit them, you are paying out. But the only ledger that means money in is your investment account. TCP stands for trust cash book. 
Okay. That means that money that you are recording in your investment account has been extracted from your trust cash book. That's why we say uh, TCB, XTCB. Okay. Now, uh, we are going to start those eight steps. And I can see that uh, you are already asking for a break before the eight steps. Can yes. I ask a quick question? Yes, question. Um, is it okay um, if you just write TCB, uh, BCB, and T stroke L for trust um, for trust ledger and and so on? Is that fine? We, we mean during your narrations. Uh, we are. Oh, oh, yes, when you narrate, you can just say TCB, BCB, uh, trust ledger. That that's that's still okay. That's okay. That's okay. And when yeah. you open okay. and when you open the actual accounts, can you call it just TCB instead of a uh, trust uh, cash book? Please uh, give it the full name, and then you can only write the the, the abbreviation during the transactions. So okay. give it the full name. Don't just write uh, uh, TCB when you when you open the account. Just try to write the full name. All right, thank you. Okay, there's something there from uh, Nikita. Please explain again with the difference between the uh, the debit. Okay, what I was saying, Nikita, was that your your trust cash book and your business cash book. The debit side means money in. The credit side means money out. On all your ledgers, your trust ledgers. The debit side means money out. The credit side means money in. All your trust ledgers, the debit side means money out. The credit side means money in. Except only two ledgers, which is your section 86.3 and 86.4 investment account. Your section 86.3 and 86.4 works exactly the same way as your trust cash book and your business cash book that means debit means in credit means out that is only in respect of your investments account where debit means in credit means out but all other trust ledgers in the normal way debit means out credit means in remember your trust cash book oh, okay. yes is it not easy to think of it this way that you you you've got a bank account and any money that you put in there is your own um, is your own uh, money. Yes. In terms of of the trust account, because I think where the confusion is that we normally do the opposite. You know and what? That's the opposite. Where the confusion yes. Comes in. yes. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, that that uh, uh, break before the eight step Z. Uh, let's take it now. Let's take that 10-minute uh, break, and then when you come back, let's quickly go through those steps. Again, I'll try to go uh, as slow as I can and explain it in detail so that everybody at the end of this uh, session should be able to go through those eight steps by yourselves. So let's take our break, and then we'll come back. Uh, advocate yes a, a quick question the one pager which is the eight steps that we will be dealing with now yes is that, is that allowed in an exam situation no <laughs> you have to know those all by heart. Are you for real? For real. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. have to know those all by heart. You can't get take that to your exam. Okay, no, no, that, that, that's fine. I, I had sent you an email with the same question. You can just ignore that question. So. Okay, okay, no problem. All right, thanks. thanks. Okay, man. Hello, advocate. Yes. I want to ask you, uh, I've been uh, observing this uh, about the dot R4. Hey, your, your, your voice is uh, 
you sound like you are far from your system. Actually, uh, I had my earphone. Uh, so I was asking uh, yeah. in your about uh, in observing, in your about you don't put the R for rent. Uh, oh, the R for rent, yes. Yes. Won't that have in any implication when it comes to marking? No, no, it won't. It, it won't. The only the only time that it will have an uh, an impact is if you uh, even if you did not write the rents, but instead of writing twenty five thousand, you write two thousand five, and uh, in that instance, they are not going to say you forgot one zero. They will just mark it wrong. But uh, whether you write the R uh, for the rent or not, it's not going to make any difference for the for your exam. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Advocate? Yes, yes. Oh yeah, um um uh, um hello, hello, a advocate. question relating um you know an exercise that we had yesterday. Hello? Yes, exercise hello? that we had yesterday. Hello? Yes, I can hello, hear you. Yeah, um oh, oh, okay. Um I wanted to know um yesterday when we paid the seven hundred and fifty to purchase the property. Yes. Was there where the payment ended up being seven hundred and five. Yes. The payment ended up at, at seven hundred and thirty-five, yes. Um okay, so how did that come about? Okay. Okay. That's seven hundred and thirty-five thousand rands. Now you'll see we created the seller with 750,000 rents. But yes, there, was an, there was there was a, a step number five. We had to pay the estate agent on behalf of the seller. Oh, the seller, yeah, yeah, remember that? Yes, what we did when we pay on behalf of the seller is that we credited our trust cash book with 15,000 rents. Oh, okay. If you look yeah, yeah. on the credit side of your trust cash, we will see that 15,000 rents. Yeah. And, uh, and now we say, on whose behalf are we paying the estate agent? And you all agree that you are paying on behalf of the seller. Therefore, so patch, um, um, trust cash book. Yes, we created our trust cash book 15,000 rents, and then we went and debited the seller's trust ledger account with 15,000 rents. Oh, okay. Now, as soon as you debit the seller, seller's trust ledger with 15,000 rents, you are saying, I have taken 15,000 rents of the total amount that I had for you, and I pay the estate agent on your behalf. Oh, that, okay. is why, that is why later when we had to account to him to pay him whatever we are holding for him, we said, we had 750 for you, but because we paid 15 on your behalf to the estate agent, therefore we say 750 minus 15, and therefore the balance was 735, and we gave him 735. Oh, okay, okay, no, yeah. I, I understand. I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, let me also take a break, and then we'll come back just now. <laughs> 